Yeah. Welcome everybody. Uh, hope you can hear me. Uh, actually, I believe that it's going to be a very uh, interesting talk today uh, because when I see the profile of the speaker in this room, I can that and I can say easily that there is more than 100 years travel experience uh, between uh, each of us and it's it's a huge experience i believe to to talk something about the future about the online expectation uh, because you all know that we are in a very very difficult uh, very tough period now uh, unfortunately we cannot plan the future because this is not under our control but, but anyway uh, all the travel companies are actually do something. They are still uh, trying to 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 be uh, to bring the new technology or follow the trends and uh, make this tough time uh, more actually uh, understandable and more uh, important for everybody, even especially for our customers. So, uh, first of all, I would like to say a few words about myself and then I would like you to you explain also, you, you say some small words about yourself before asking the question. So, my name is Mehmet. Uh, I'm from Turkey, from Golden Bay. Uh, I'm in this travel industry uh, from uh, 1992 and uh, we are especially in Turkey more focused on the, the corporate travel uh, side. We are representing uh, Expedia and Agencia group in Turkey. So we are on the corporate travel technology and uh, we are presenting some cruise line in Turkey uh, as a leisure travel. So let's start with Bex meanwhile. Bex, can you please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, thank you for inviting me onto this panel. I really appreciate it. And it's always a sp second one I've done with you guys. And it's always really good. So thank you. Um, so my name is Bex. I am the managing director of Blue Cube Travel. Uh, we are a privately owned travel management company based in London, um, but with a kind of global network around us with the partners that we work with. Does that help? A little bit short. Is that enough? Do you want more? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. So I would like to continue with Vlad. So we know each other for a very, very long time, actually. Vlad, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Uh, since we are online, but still it's a Turkish uh, enterprise, which is running the show, I would like to say thank you for inviting me to this uh, conference. Of course, uh, I am missing the offline events, which I enjoyed just before COVID, uh, almost uh, two years ago already. And uh, I think this is uh, a good sign that uh, we will need these face-to-face -face events. Yeah. Uh, shortly about myself. Uh, so, like Mehmet uh, is in travel business from '92. I just realized I'm also in travel business from 92 so we are the same age at least in travel industry back that with you and uh, i'm running a company called baltic travel group uh, we are DM dmc and tmc at the same time so we run leisure inbound we run uh, mice meeting incentive conference and events and we as mehmet uh, represents agencia uh, and expedia group in turkey uh, we do the same uh, in the Baltic states of Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. So we have corporate travel department, which is a partner of uh, EGA, Agency Global Alliance. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we are going to Spain now. Pablo, uh, I am also a big fan of uh, Real Madrid. So can you please tell us a little bit uh, about yourself? Because you also, you were a... Uh, you were you worked actually in uh, travel industry for a long years, and you have been in El Corte Ingles Viajes, and then you moved to Real Madrid. So I think it's a very very interesting career. Please. Hello, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, yes, I, I joined El Corte Ingles 
and I was working for the travel agency for 15 years. And then, uh, then I changed to Real Madrid in 1999. And from that year, I'm, I'm working like travel manager of the company, uh, the teams, football and basketball. And well, with different experiences between the, what uh, we call the business travel and the groups travel because all the teams are groups and it's different when the when the individuals travel. No? But thank you very much. Okay, and John, again, UK. So, uh, Veeam Travel Network, a huge global travel network actually from UK. Uh, and I would like also you explain, you tell us a little bit about yourself. Then I, I, I would like to go to the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on today. It's my second time uh, on, on this panel, on this event. Uh, pleased to come back again. Um, I'm John Hobson. I'm um, head of the Wing Global Travel Network. We are a network of uh, independent travel management companies in 76 countries around the world. Uh, my role is to ensure that there is a certain level of consistency uh, when delivering uh, travel solutions to customers. Um, I've been in the travel industry for over 30 years uh, and work very closely also with uh, Advantage Travel Partnership, who is the uh, parent company of the Wing Global Network based out of London um, in the UK. Okay. So uh, now uh, let's start with Bex, if you wish. Uh, Bex, I would like to ask you a question about the business travel. You know, we are talking about the business travel and the local trends for the corporate companies. Uh, so uh, as we all know that the business travel industry has affected too much with this coronavirus. So, uh, how we have to convince actually what is your plan about the future how we will convince the corporate customer to travel again and when you expect the recovery thank you um i'm just going to add because i feel like now i should have given my years worth of experience so i started in travel in 2000 so i'm about 21 years old as far as this experience is concerned. so i didn't link really to 100 years between us but actually maybe we're not that far off. Um, so yes, obviously, no uh, surprise, business travel has been incredibly hard hit, as has all travel. Um, and certainly in the UK right now, it doesn't feel like it's getting any brighter for anybody any sooner, uh, with the laws sort of changing and adapting. And it, it feels like we're not going to be able to leave, but we can't leave this country now without being fined. Um, so that does make things even more difficult, uh, certainly for my leisure friends and 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 colleagues for corporate though if you can't travel for leisure kind of it goes to figure that you can't travel for businesses because somebody deciding to go on holiday is a personal decision a company forcing or asking you to go on behalf of them is something quite different um, and the legal ramifications around that are very different in different countries the moral ramifications about that and and it's a much bigger piece now than, um, than perhaps we would have all thought it would have been looking back a year ago when this all sort of first started hitting in the UK. Um, I love the uh, I love the choice of words of convincing, of persuading. Uh, I don't think that's really it's not where we sit, honestly. So we're a travel management company, um, and therefore we're an aggregator of brands. Okay, so I'm not representing an airline. I'm representing several airlines. And I'm not representing a hotel, I'm representing many, many, many hotels. Uh, and where we feel is our duty to our clients is to really help them gain confidence in traveling again. What has happened is that the whole world has stopped. We will all start again at different points. But actually, the, the industry that we all work in and that we all love, um, we probably all know actually hasn't, some people have been doing some very good things. Some people, um, it, it's all about selling within our industry. It's all about marketing ourselves and it's all about promotion. And whether that be a beach, whether that be something else, what we haven't been looking at for quite a long time or for many years, if ever, is our standards, our security, our safety, how we consider how we look after travelers. 
Um, and I think this is the thing that, that the pandemic has brought up. So for me, it's not a case of persuading clients or convincing them to start traveling again. It's a duty to us as the industry to prove to them that we're ready for when they do and that we're taking things seriously that are important to them. So that we are, we are prepared as an industry as much for them. And, and actually that's what I think we should be doing and that's our position. And I'll add something that's a little contentious. If they don't want to travel, if they've changed their approach to travel, that's okay. We have okay. to accept that and we have to work with them and, and, and look at what this new travel looks like together. Okay, so I think Vlad want, want to ask some question. Please, Vlad. No, I just want to continue this discussion that uh, I think okay. it's not... It's not the job of uh, TMC, of travel management company, to convince uh, our customers that they should travel or persuade them. I think we exist uh, because uh, uh, our customers know that it's important to travel. And uh, there is a very famous uh, uh, study from the Oxford Economics, uh, which proved that uh, uh, every dollar spent on business travel generates more than 12 uh, dollars of additional revenues and uh, yes. I think since now uh, most of the countries are in economical crisis uh, I think the business travel will be an essential instrument how uh, many countries and companies can uh, thrive again and flourish again yes and uh, it's just a question of uh, time when you know the vaccination will be rolled out and the people could travel ago i think uh maybe not instantly but we will see a very quick uh, rebirth of uh, business travel again i mean there are a lot of discussions will people uh, come back to the offices or not or will they stay at home i think this is a big uh, discussion now in most of the countries but when it comes to business travel i think uh there are, of course, different uh, uh, projections. Uh, what will be decline? You know, some say there will be like 90% decline, some say 50% decline. But I think that business travel will remain an essential part of the uh, company's uh, life. And as soon as people could travel safely without uh, any limitations, I think we'll be back on track. I would like to ask you something, Vlad. Normally, sure. you also have incoming business to Baltics. So, which kind of mm -hmm. new mm -hmm. uh, idea or new safety uh, travel uh, opportunity you are offering to your customer? How you are managing that? Because everybody is talking now about health, about the safety. So vaccination is not that much going maybe so quick. But anyway, uh, some part of the population has been vaccinated. But, uh, I really would like to understand, as an incoming operator, wh wh what are you offering uh, to your customer in Baltics? At the moment, we are offering... Uh waiting line waiting list because currently no foreigners are allowed to travel to the baltic states we have uh, uh, limitations in force at least in in latvia so uh, so uh, only exceptional cases can be allowed so but we hope that in the end of april uh, uh, these restrictions will be over but generally i think uh, you know if we talk about the baltic states uh, I think we will benefit from all this post-COVID uh, situation due to the fact that uh, the Baltic states are uh, one of the uh, less populated countries in European Union. And, uh, you know, the question of social distancing uh, uh, is, uh, is actually, you know, our normal way of living. And that's why I think our figures also were not so high compared with other countries just due to the fact that uh, even uh, even uh, our capital cities has uh, uh, not so many people living here and uh, and if you go in the countryside you know it's uh, very difficult sometimes if you travel you know some hundred kilometers out of the capital 
uh, there are very few people living there. So, uh, of course, uh, with all hygienic uh, requirements and with social distancing and with the good uh, uh, medical tests available on sport, I think uh, all this uh, uh, COVID requirements would be possible to implement. Uh, okay, John, uh, I would like to ask you about the about the wind travel network because you are, are working with so different locations and mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's much more easier for you to see the behavior of the corporate customer because in some region they start to travel a little in some region the restriction and the lockdown still continue so actually what is your expectation for this year uh, and the 2022 when the business travel will be back actually and where mm -hmm. we have to position ourselves uh, in this area during this pandemic period yeah, there's, there's a lot there and I'll try and answer as best I can to, to your sort of your question. It's a very good question. Um, so you're right. I mean, globally, um, in some areas, travel never stops. OK, it just reduced. So in some markets where domestic travel is permissible, we are still we're seeing that, that it's continued. And in some markets, we've seen some growth. So you could look at China, for example. You can look at Russia. And even now, the USA, where you're starting to see passenger numbers grow um, on domestic routes. Now, you know, international travel still remains off limits. Um, so a lot of corporate customers that were traveling are only restricted really to to within their borders where it where it's allowed. Bex has alluded to obviously some of the challenges we have in the UK and Europe. Um, and so it is very isolated in or it's a, a really patchy where obviously travel uh, is, is being allowed and, and where it's growing. Um, my predictions for this year and beyond uh, would be that uh, we're going to see what, obviously what leisure, uh, what form that takes, because I think for some corporate customers, um, they'll want to start to travel, uh, but they'll want to see how the leisure market fares before they, they commit. For other corporate customers, depending on their size, travel is a huge enabler for them. OK, it's also seen, you know, it also is a true value to their business. So, you know, I do think there is an appetite to start traveling, but we still have the same challenges. And that is uh, a lack of coordination between countries to open borders, because international travel is, is really what it's about. That's obviously the whole purpose, obviously, of, of having a network. Um, so my predictions would be that um, if I'm honest, um, Q4 is probably likely to see some form of corporate travel. Uh, a little bit of growth. Uh, 22 obviously will be a lot better, but probably around about 50% of what we saw in 2019. We have to remember the true value of corporate travel. Back in 2019, $1.4 trillion was spent on global corporate travel. It's a huge number, huge number. And so therefore we've got some way to go. But if I'm really honest, and I, and I had a conversation with um, a gentleman from Rockport Analytics, and they produced the GBTA Business Travel Index. Um, and the talk there was that business travel won't resume to 2019 levels until 2025, that with an accelerated vaccine program, we may climb out of that. That, may, that prediction may be, uh, may be quite um, achievable, that we will reach that target before then. You know, you've seen in the US, the vaccine programs accelerated. In the UK, obviously, there's a lot of vaccination going on, other places as well. So my prediction will be that we'll start to see some form of corporate travel uh, in Q4, uh, and that will continue into 22. And then we're going to have to wait a couple of years before we really see, uh, we really go back to sort of some of the numbers that we've been used to, to used to seeing. OK, yes. Uh, it's very important to see the some projection or some uh, some actually opinion from the industry uh, leaders and the airlines they are looking for some opportunities the vaccination is another thing 
the safety in travel is totally different uh, regarding to the countries but yes uh, it will take a little bit more time and this is what actually we also expect from uh, writing it will gradually mm -hmm. increase the figures on the business travel also so uh, pablo uh, yes please Sorry, I was going to say, just to add to that, and there's something else I thought about, and so apologies for interrupting there, is that I think, you know, as a, as a travel management companies and travel industry leaders, uh, you know, there is a huge opportunity to really talk to your, to, to your customer base uh, and ask them, you know, what their thoughts are on, on traveling. Because, as I said to you, some of the smaller organizations will want to try a return to travel earlier, you know, there's no better way of obviously than trying to close a deal or working with your customers, fulfilling commitments and having the face to face uh, situation. So I think it really will be uh, down to the TMC. You know, we're advocating this within our uh, global community. Uh, have the conversations with your, tra your, travel, uh, your travel managers, your buyers, really to try and guide them through what a, what a new travel program may look like one that's fit for obviously a, a new travel period you know to you know life after the pandemic but also make sure that it's plugged the gaps that they may have had previously so around duty of care uh traveler well-being and that sort of thing and and, and also finally that the whole travel sustainability piece as well okay so pablo uh we are all from the travel agencies or tmc's tour operators and we are in the middle of the travel industry but you are actually from a football team uh, real madrid during that pandemic time everything stopped on the travel agency side but the football still keep continue so it means that maybe uh, most of your travel uh, still uh, continue you are still traveling uh, for the football games or for some championships etc so first of all uh, how you are managing this very uh, uh, very uh, how can i say a uh, big uh, or important agenda on your side because you have to plan everything. Uh, and actually, Real Madrid team is traveling too much. Not only the team, I think. The, uh, the whole brand is traveling. They need some travel uh, needs during that time. And actually, uh, how do you use the technology or how do you manage your trips uh, in Real Madrid side? Uh, well... Mm, yes, it's true uh, that uh, we have um, like two parts in the club, okay? We have the individuals and the individuals are like all the companies, they don't travel, okay? It's like everybody, but all the teams, and we are speaking about 15 teams because it's not just football, it's football and basketball, we continue traveling, okay? So first of all, what we do is to follow the health protocols we are speaking about spain and then depending on the uh, countries that we have to visit we have the, the protocols in every country or in every region of these countries for example in germany it depends on the lender where you are there are some restrictions or not it's the same in spain depending on the on the local communities you know so it's a little bit tricky because you have to read every day the different protocols in everywhere okay so and in spain it depends if it's professional or non-professional the protocols are different so it's not the same for the first football team men women or basketball than for the academy teams when they travel there are different protocols so we have like a live like a seven or eight books with the different protocols that we have to follow in every in every trip um, then we have to follow the rules of every country for example now the first football team have to fly to liverpool okay we have to do a passenger locator form that it's it's online we have to do it in the 48 hours before traveling to liverpool then we have to ask for a letter 
of the uh, English FA that recognize Real Madrid like a professional football team, and then that allows you don't to don't do the quarantine. And then when you come back to Sp and you have to go with your PCR, at uh, this PCR is okay to come back to Spain because we do all in 72 hours. But to come back to Spain, we have to do another formulary for every passenger. So, and that is the same with the basketball team. Basketball team was yesterday in France. They are today here. Next week they go to, next week they travel to Greece. And in two weeks they travel to Istanbul. So we have to follow the different rules in every country with the protocols and with everything. Uh, all, all are charter planes or in Spain, when we speak about the academy, they travel in their own bus, so we don't mix with other passengers. We have internally a health protocol that we follow with PCR every week or every two days, depending on the teams. And then for us, it's more work because we have to do a lot of papers. Imagine just to go to Liverpool next week, we have to do four papers per passenger. If we now we are traveling around 80 passenger, you can think that there are 300 papers that you didn't do before. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you are in the city, we don't go out. We are all the day in the hotel and we will just go to Anfield Stadium for the training session and the match. We try to, to use private terminals or private ways, trying to avoid mix with other people. Okay. This is what the, the pandemic is doing. And well, I think that we cannot complain. We are very lucky because we have work and, and that's the most important. And we are helping people, helping hotels, helping, helping airline companies, helping DMCs, helping drivers uh, to do their business too. So uh, we have to be positive and think that we are very, very lucky. We have to do a lot of things more. We have to spend a lot of more hours for the same thing, but we are very lucky if you see how is the world and if you see how is the tourism world now. And the other question that was about the digital moment. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, when we speak about the travel industry and everybody is speaking about the digital moment and when uh, we have to split. One thing is the tourism, and I think that the individual tourism, the family tourism, will not. It's now. My my daughters, they don't go to a travel agency to, to buy a ticket. They don't go to anywhere to book a hotel. They do all online, okay? If you will speak about the individual travelers of a company, there are a lot of tools in the different companies in Spain where you can book your, your trips. But the company has to have an agreement with this tool, with this travel agency to do that. It's not a, the point is that the person is looking for something in internet hours and hours and they are buying what they want. There are protocols, there are, <clears throat> there are rules, there are policies in the company. So I think that the, the digital moment is today, but it's not a free moment that everyone do what they want, okay? And the third part are the incentives, groups, and so on. I think that the, that will be very, very different because you always need, will need a DMC because usually the trial managers, they have some know-how, they have some expertise, but they don't have enough expertise like a local DMC to manage the group. They don't know the places, they don't know the rules, they don't know the new things that are happening in the different cities. So the digital moment is today, but we have to know how we use the digital APPs, whatever, to do an, a success our trip, but we will need, I, and I'm completely sure, the local support of a DMC when you are speaking about these incentives, these groups, and if you are speaking about some individual trips that you need a local driver at disposal, that you need something uh, to phone when you have a problem or because your client is a really very, very VIP person, 
and that will be offline. So the point now is to know how your business can be helped by the digital moment and how to find the balance between the digital, the online and the offline resources. Yes. Okay, I totally agree to it. I just so, want to uh, add, uh, yes, Mehmet. Of course, I mean, please, it please, goes please. Not, not only to uh, the sport teams, it goes to every single booking nowadays. I mean, before we were talking a lot about automation and that uh, the customers, corporate customers could book everything online through application and so on and so on. But now uh, when we see that the airlines are changing uh, conditions, itineraries, uh, rates all the time when the countries are opening or closing borders when uh, uh, nobody knows what will be tomorrow. Uh, I think uh, the role of uh, travel agent is becoming much more significant than it was before COVID. Yes, before COVID we had a lot of automation and uh, very often, you know, the customers could make bookings almost without any uh, interaction from the travel agents side but nowadays uh, we have less transactions but each transactions require uh, maybe 10 times more efforts and time and resources than it was before and uh, what I hear from my colleagues uh, sometimes just uh, one simple booking which before would take you know one minute to complete now it can takes hours and, and maybe days uh, due to all uh, uh, this uh, post-COVID reality and due to the constant changes. Exactly. So the importance of the travel agents and travel agencies, TMCs, is much more uh, actually uh, valuable today. So the people, they, they know that uh, even to cancel or refund their ticket during that pandemic time, they needed us. So we had so much to our customers uh, to get their refunds or to change their flights. Booking, it's very easy. So you go online, you, you book everything and you pay by credit card. But when you need a service, uh, then uh, you need uh, a travel agent uh, uh, in front of you or on the line uh, helping you or suggesting you some things. Uh, so, uh, we are still talking about the, the trends and the, the new way of travel, the new way of everything is coming. Uh, so, uh, Bex, actually, uh, how you are planning or what means for you new way of travel? Uh, if somebody asks you the, the new way of travel is coming, the, the customer's behavior will change, a pro a etc. So what does it mean for you? Can you please a little bit tell us uh, your opinion or your, please. There we go. I think um, echoing what other people have said on this call already, the our job now is, is changed. There was a time where our job as an agent was to kind of, if we were either booking a holiday or if we were booking a business trip, to find the appropriate bits and fit it all together because it was a difficult thing for people to do. Um, whereas now, it's not just about doing that bit, it's just making sure that those bits that we're putting together are ticking boxes as well, so that they're safe, they're secure, and it, it, they're asking for our um, opinion on things now, our expertise, our experience, and that's something that's um, that's really important and that's come, that can come through. And especially in the business travel sector, whereas actually for a long time, there's been a gap between um, the, the travellers and why they see the value in booking with a travel management company. And often, sadly, they didn't pre-COVID because it was an extra price point. They didn't understand why they had to pay for something that in theory they could book for themselves. Whereas what this pandemic has done us is it, it, it's, it's shown everybody that actually you do need help and you do need to speak to an agent because they are the experts. And that in its own very own right means that we have to start now looking at different models and different ways of working as a business, as businesses, as an industry, because the one thing that this has shone the light on is that we are still very, very much needed, whether you be working in an airline, whether you be working in a hotel, whether you be in our part in the value proposition of the agency, 
I'll, I'll probably more specifically, but we weren't being paid. Nobody was being paid for any of that, right? All that was happening was that money was being given back. The airlines refunding, the hotels refunding, and everyone just having to kind of process that. And, and I think that's a big wake up call to the entire industry. So you already see it. People are changing their commercial models. Um, it's being it's been led by tech and it was done for a very long time. But, um, but other people, other companies are now looking at that and they're, they're reevaluating <clears throat> their value propositions. So as a company, uh, as a travel agency, as a travel management company, you're not really just there to book travel anymore. People can do that themselves. They can go online and book travel. Your value proposition is everything else that you bring to the table as far as that booking is concerned. And arguably, that's the bit that you want people to pay for, not the booking of the travel. So I think you're going to start seeing companies really kind of look into this. You know, for us, one, we launched our, we launched our subscription fee model um, pre-COVID, <laughs> just. Um, but it wasn't a great time to launch it because what we were basically asking our clients to do was to start paying for something that they hadn't been paying, that they didn't need anymore because they weren't traveling. Um, we did a few hybrids, we've messed around with it a little bit, but actually we're in a really good place now and we've got people coming to us to talk to us about that because they understand that we know what our value proposition is um, and that makes a massive difference. So I think you're going to see a lot of travel companies really wanting to, wanting to diversify because they're going to need to a little bit, but you need to understand what it is that you're giving to, what is it, what is it that you do that is worth something to then give back to your traveller or your client or whatever that looks like. Does that help? So in UK, actually, oh, that's nice. <laughs> uh, in UK, so the British uh, business traveller, uh, do you think he continue to use the uh, video conferencing tool or the digital channels? To, to decrease a little bit their travel volume in the near future? Or once the, I mean, in a one or two years time, they will restart to travel again. What, what is your personal opinion about that? So my personal opinion is that I'm now hearing terms like Zoom fatigue. So people are fed up. They really desperately don't want to be talking like this anymore. Uh, but then on the other side, I think there's companies that have, from both a finance perspective, saved a lot of money this year, let's be honest, without travelling. Um, that has had a good effect on business on companies' budgets. But also, more importantly, sustainability goals, travel and well-being, looking after their staff. So I think there's a, there's, a, there's a balance. And I think it's about companies learning about what has worked in this situation and what really hasn't worked. And therefore, understanding what business critical is for them as far as travel, but also what the new business normal could look like. Because there were some people, you know, you could be a line manager and you could be out of your you know, out of your home for the whole week, every single month of the year. That's exhausting. Like who nobody wants to do that. And now you have a taste of being back at home. You're going to balance that up a little bit now. But there's other things that you just absolutely have to be face to face for. So we've been working with our clients to redefine what they think business travel is about and why they travel as a business. Um, and then we think, again, like most of you, there's going to be a surge. Of course, there will. People, as soon as you can travel, people are going to want to go, right? We, we, we all want to go. Um, I think then it will kind of die down a little bit. I think people will start realizing that there's a time for Zoom or whatever. And there's a time for in person. And it's just about matching the right meetings up for the right product almost. So I think I do a lot of prelim stuff in this kind of environment. And then when it comes to closing the deal, doing the final piece, you're going to go and want to shake that person's hand. So I think it's um, the middle ground at the moment. OK, I, I hope I hope it's going to be very soon. <laughs> so Vlad. Uh, more or less same question to you, uh, uh, because uh, the business travel in your area, you told us that the countries are not that much big, but, but you have a very important volume of business travel in your company. 
So uh, yes. actually, uh, I really want to understand uh, how big is this business travel demand in Baltics. So it's uh, increasing of this tail in the fall, next following years. And uh, how you manage it actually? Okay, as uh, one of my colleagues at this panel mentioned, uh, business travel never stopped, it just was reduced. And uh, thanks God, there are some industries where the people cannot just cannot work online. It can be construction industry, it can be uh, sailors, shipping, uh, sportsmen, uh, you know, some other industries, politicians, even politicians, you know. Uh, of course, we see there are some uh, summits uh, taking place online, but still, you know, if uh, Mr. Erdogan wants to meet Mr. Putin, they prefer to. <laughs> <laughs> to, to speak face to face rather than over Zoom or Skype or any other platform. And uh, again, uh, if we look at uh, our uh, eastern neighbor, at Russia, uh, just recently there was a big uh, tourism uh, fair, the biggest uh, Russian tourism fair, MITT. And you know, what I saw, you know, from the post in the Facebooks, it was completely uh offline so you know the companies were there with the stands meeting potential prospect and so on and so on and again what 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 is my conclusion is as soon as uh, the government uh is the regulation uh the people uh, start to travel and start to meet again maybe it, it uh, you know with some uh, with some reductions but still i think uh uh, the most important is face-to-face -face meeting, meetings and handshaking. And uh, uh, the same is applicable to Russia. And I think it's uh, the same is applicable to any other country in the world. So currently we have a lot of restrictions uh, from the government. But as soon as uh, the restrictions will be released, we will see a big boom of travel. Uh, it can be leisure travel, it can be mice travel, it can be it can be business travel. So that, that, that's what I think. And uh, uh, again, we are just talking with the, our existing customers. We see that the, in many international companies which are based in Latvia, uh, there is travel ban. And of course, I mean, these international companies, they have to follow the instructions given by the headquarters, you know, based in, uh, in America or in Europe. Uh, but if we see local independent companies, they are more open uh, to traveling and they're already taking chances and traveling. And uh, uh, we see that uh, already in uh, March, uh, uh, there was announcement that Turkish uh, airlines uh, resume uh, flights uh, from Riga from the 1st of April, Air Flot is resuming flights from Riga and many, many other air companies are returning. So uh, all these uh, uh, limitations and restrictions which were uh, in place uh, during last year, we see uh, that they are going to, to, to the end. And uh, it gives us a hope that uh, the travel will resume and again, uh, there were first charter flights uh, to Canarian Islands, uh, to Egypt, and uh, they are instantly sold. You know, people want to travel. You know, everybody is sick and tired of uh, sitting in the cages, <laughs> sitting at home. People want to travel, and it uh, it is valid both for leisure customers and for for, for business as well. Okay. Okay. Thank Thank you very much, Vlad. So, Pablo, I have a question. Uh, you are managing a very important budget in your club. Uh, you have so much. And how you can uh, manage the business or travel and expense policy in the club? So, are there some limitations that you have to follow? Or as a big football club, very famous club, you are actually spending much more money than the others, maybe. Uh, so, be some controls or uh, some regulations, some policy on that. Can you please tell us a little bit how you manage this budget? 
No, no, no. Uh, we have regulations, uh, internal regulations, and we <clears throat> we follow team by team, competition by competition, our budget, and we see uh, why we are not following the forecast. Uh, our our financial year is the same as the regular season. So we go from the 1st July to the 30th of June, okay? Usually the companies go from 1st January to 31st December, okay? We go with our regular seasons, all the sport clubs, and then, uh, which is our problem? The draws. We don't know where we will play in the Champions League or in the Euro League or in the Spanish Cup because there are draws. And for me, it's not the same to play the semi-final in the Spanish Cup with Atletico Madrid, who lives in my in the same city, or go to Barcelona. And if we speak about the Champions League, it's not the same playing Paris or playing Moscow, just because of the difference of the hours in the plane. It's more expensive. So uh, we have an holistic budget for all the club with a forecast. Imagine for the season 22-23, our forecast is to achieve semi-finals in the Champions League uh, and final four in the Euro League. Okay, and with this forecast, every department has to do their homework. For example, ticketing department, they have to think about the incomings with the ticketing sales. I have to think about the expenses with the traveling. Sponsor department, they have to think about the incomings because there are prices because if it's not the same, if you achieve quarterfinals or semifinals and so on. Okay. Then I don't know who will be the opponents in the Champions League. So I, I say, okay, if we achieve the semifinals, this is our budget for the first stage group, a final, quarterfinals, and semifinals. Okay. And I what I do is a media, an average of what we have done in the previous years. In La Liga, it's easier because I know exactly what we've done the last year, okay? And then we have a budget per team, per competition, per match. So I see, imagine if we go to Barcelona to play in La Liga and I have a, a, a budget, but I don't know the calendar so because the calendar is in July. When the calendar is done, maybe I have to go to Barcelona to play and there is the mobile congress. And with the mobile congress, Barcelona is full from four years ago. And I have to pay three times the hotel room and, and makes the difference with my with my budget. Okay, but I know what is happening in this trip. Okay. So go and this is our way to, to do the things. We go trip by trip with the forecast, with the real expenses, and we see the difference. And we have an holistic vision with all the club. But uh, yes, yes, we have rules, we have budgets. And it's not the same for all the teams. It's not the same in all the, in the different cities. We have an idea and our goal is to have a good level following the sport decision of the different coaches, but we have rules and we cannot do what, what we want, what we don't. We, we are a big club, but we have to run the club like every company. We are normal people. We cannot do strange things with the money. Uh, uh, just a quick question. Did you have some cost cutting this time or uh, your budget within the budget and you did not uh, any cost cutting uh, during the last year? No, sure, sure, sure. All the clubs, uh, imagine in Spain, uh, all the matches are closed doors. So we don't have... We have zero incoming from ticketing, VIP areas, restaurants, tour, and so on. So in our budget, we don't have this money. But the sponsors, they have problems too. Imagine our main sponsor is an airline company. We have hotels as a sponsor. Every company is having problems, and they have problems with their day-to-day -day business. So, of course, we are trying to reduce and to adjust our budget to the to the to the situation yeah yeah we 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 try to achieve the best possible service but we try to 
uh, do our best with the budget and with our suppliers, of course. Yes, yes. We are we are the same, the same as you, the same. And we have to be the same as everybody. We cannot think that we are something different because we have big stars and a lot of people who like to be like Benzema or Modric or whatever. No, 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 no. We have to be normal people. Okay, very good. Very good to hear that actually. Uh, so I uh, have another question to you actually. Uh, so what's going on in the business travel? What we are experiencing now? So because it's a very different time and uh, what is your opinion about what, what we have today? Well, what we have today obviously is a, a little bit of a, um, a mixed bag across the world. Um, I think there's a lot of a lot of discussions going on uh, with uh, travel providers to the end user uh, on the corporate side. There's been a lot of inquiries as well of what travel may look like. And uh, so there's a lot of planning going on. There's also uh, been a period of time where a lot of corporate customers have looked at their provider uh, with a view that is there something different out there that we should be doing we haven't considered before, whether that be pricing, will that be the whole travel model? Because travel budgets, you know, have have reduced and because there's been you know, very little travel at all. So I think that, you know, the whole dynamic of a TMC relationship has, has changed a little bit over the last year. Um, I think uh, a lot of TMCs have also uh, had to try and diversify as well. If you were siloed in one particular area, so you were focusing primarily in corporate, you may have looked at um, obviously uh, a switch into some leisure uh, activities as well, perhaps meeting events. When I say meeting events, I'm, I'm talking more around the hybrid version, like the version we're doing today, um, and really just expanding the offering that they can provide to a customer because let's face it you know we all agree that travel will come back at some point we just don't know when that's going to be and when it does come back it could be on a, on a regional basis uh, and there might be small pockets of travel before we start to see uh, you know uh, uh, the world opening up again i think the other important factor as well is that we talk about vaccines and the rollout there and there's a lot of countries that are quite way behind some of the, some of the other markets you know of, of really accelerated is that we shouldn't really forget some of the poorer nations that say that perhaps haven't got access to uh, to the vaccine. And I think it's really important that in order for all of us to be able to provide a global travel service again, that we don't overlook the fact that some markets are going to be a little bit behind, obviously, uh, you know, their ability to vaccinate their population and therefore make it safe for obviously our travelers to to go into so there's there's a hell of a lot of work going on um but i think i come back to another point about travel and what's going on i think there is the discussion now is that um you know travel should be seen in some in some companies as an investment it's an investment in the future um for a long time yes we've been used to obviously talking to each other this way and it's been an opportunity for some companies to say actually why do I need to go on a train for an hour that's going to cost my company money, whereas it's costing them very little money to be able to obviously work this way. So definitely travel programs are going to change. We're going to see an evolution there. Um, and I think that will continue well into next year as well. But I also think as well, we also have what I am classing as a, a fragmented travel community. A lot of people have used this opportunity to work from home, businesses are closed, so you haven't necessarily got everyone in the same area that you had before. Some people have even taken opportunities to work in other countries where they could, where maybe the climate might be better, they've got access to good, to good Wi-Fi, and it doesn't really matter where they are in the world, they can still perform the function. So we need to take that into consideration as well and, and the whole travel evolution and where people are gonna be. I'm not saying they're displaced, what I'm saying is that we just have to think differently about how can we can move people around the world moving forward. So there's there's a lot to digest there, um, but this is about, uh, I guess, pushing the reset button on travel, but also for us as travel providers being at the forefront of any discussions and guiding our customers in the ways of total trip management. So that's taking ownership of everything. Yes, yes. So I agree with you. 
Uh, actually, today I saw some figures coming from Amadeus, and uh, it's showing us that the, the business travel uh, is slightly increased in March, uh, very highly in domestic, and uh, a little bit in the international side. Those are the very good signs, I think. And uh, the people, they really want to travel. This is my personal opinion, actually. So leisure, for sure, it's going to be back very soon. And uh, the business travel as well. Because what I uh, saw today, uh, people, they, they did not spend money for the travel. And they have also uh, money uh, to, to spend in the near future for the leisure. And the same for the companies. The companies, they had a very, very good cost cutting during that pandemic time. They did not spend anything, almost anything, uh, on their travel budget. So uh, we all hope that the, from the next year, we will see much more positive, uh, more significant moves on the, on the business travel. And uh, most of the companies, uh, they really profit during that time. So it was very useful for all of them to maybe develop their technology or uh, change a little bit the, the, structure, the structure of their company. So they did really everything. Uh, I also believe that for who will survive till next year or next following years, that it's, it's a great opportunity because most of the player will leave the area maybe. Uh, there is also another opportunity for the business travel or TMCs. So uh, thank you very much uh, for today, for your uh, great uh, talk, great opinions, uh, and uh, hope to see you very soon in, an, in a, another maybe uh, offline event, face-to-face -face event, somewhere in Europe, uh, because online is great, but we really need to shake hands sometimes and to be face-to-face. -face. Uh, thank you very much, Bex, uh, Pablo, Vlad, and John. It's, it was great today uh, to be with you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.